Now to design this form, I'm going to use Bootstrap library. So I'm going to open my browser and here I'm going to search for getbootstrap.com. Using Bootstrap, you can specify predefined styling to your project. So I'm going to just open the getbootstrap.com and click on this get started. Then I'm going to use this CDN to add this library in my project. I'm going to copy the CDN and paste it in the head section of this website. So I'm going to open the header.ejs and just start of this title. Down here, I'm going to paste this link tag. So I can use all the classes of Bootstrap in my project. Back to the base.hs and here I'm going to create a simple login page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a division tag and add some Bootstrap classes to it. So to create a division tag, you don't need to specify here div and then specify the class name. Instead, div is a default class in Visual Studio Code Editor. So you don't need to specify div here. If you want to add a class, you just need to specify dot or if you want to add ID, you need to just specify hash. That's it. This will automatically create a division tag with class and ID. Now I'm creating a division tag with class. So I'm going to say here dot and specify class name text center. When I press tab, this will create a division tag with a class text center. If you want, you can add multiple classes as well. Let me show you how you can do that. I'm going to just specify text center and then I want to add my custom class. So here I'm going to specify dot again and say center D. When I press tab, this will create a division tag with two classes, text center and center div. Now, what if I want to add ID with this division tag? So just for that, what I'm going to do is once I specify these both classes, I'm going to specify here hash and then specify ID to it. So here I'm going to say login. When I press tab, you can notice here, I'm going to have two classes and a simple ID. So you can notice this is super easy to create any HTML element in Visual Studio Code Editor. Now, just after that, inside this div, I'm going to create a division tag with the class container. So here I'm going to say dot container as well as I want to add with 25% to this div and I'm going to specify border to it. So I'm going to add border and padding Y 5. So this will add top and bottom padding to this division tag. When I press tab, it's going to add these classes to this division tag. The container is going to specify 80% width to this div and make all the content at the center of the document. The W25 will specify 25% width to this division tag. Then I'm going to specify border class. This will add border to this div. And then I'm going to specify padding by 5. So this will add top and bottom padding to this division tag. Just for that, here I'm going to create another div with title class. And inside this div, I'm going to have my login system title. So here I'm going to create h2 heading tag and specify class to it. So here I'm going to specify class font width bold. When I press tab, it will create h2 heading tag with the class font width bold. Oops, I think I misspelled the class here. Font width bold. Just for that, inside this h2 heading tag, I'm going to specify title to this page, login system. Then I'm going to specify padding bottom to this div and save the changes. And load the browser. You can notice I have the result something like this. Just for that, I'm going to back to my project. And just after this h2 heading tag, I'm going to create here a span tag and specify here login for the existing user. So this is just a simple message for the user. Save these changes. And just after this div, just down here, I'm going to create a new form. I'm going to leave this action attribute as it is for now. And inside this form, I'm going to create input elements. So I'm going to add two input elements inside this form. First for the email and second for the password. So here I'm going to add division tag with the form group class. So this is a bootstrap class to group the elements. So inside this form group, I'm going to add input tag of type email. Then specify class to it form control. So this will add predefined styling to this input element. And just for that, I'm going to specify placeholder. Placeholder is going to be email. And then I'm going to specify name. This is very important property because we're going to access the value of this input element using this name attribute. So here I'm going to say name email. Just out of this input element, I'm going to create a small tag and specify text register email address. And to this small tag, I'm going to specify class, which is form text, text muted to specify light color to this text and specify text left to move this text to the left side of the container. Save this file. Here you can notice I have this spawn tag 
his input element and this small tag. Just after that, just after this div, here I'm going to create another form group class. And inside it, I'm going to create input tag. But this time, this is the type of password. And I'm going to specify class form control and specify name password. So you can access the password using this name attribute. Don't forget to specify placeholder. And I'm going to specify here placeholder password. Let me just save the changes, reload the browser. Here I'm going to have input tag with the password field. And just out of that, just out of this div, here I'm going to add a button. And this is a type of submit button. So I'm going to specify type submit. Then I'm going to specify class btn btn success. So I'm going to add a bootstrap class btn btn success. And then I'm going to specify text to it. Submit. Save the changes, reload the browser. And here I'm going to have my button. Now let me just modify this button a little bit more. I'm going to add another class here, a rounded pill. So this will just add this border radius to this button. Now just for that, what I want, I want to add my custom styling to this login form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my own style.css file and add some custom styling to this project. So I'm going to just back to my editor and create a new folder inside this login system and name this folder public because inside this folder I'm going to add CSS styling and the asset file. So inside this public folder I'm going to create a new file and name this file style.css. If you want you can create this file inside the CSS folder as well. I'm going to just add this style.css inside this public folder. Before we add style inside this style.css file we need to inform this server to use this static asset. We already know that how to inform the HTTP server to use a static asset. So what I'm going to do is just after this view engine down here I'm going to create a command and say load static assets and here I'm going to inform the HTTP server to use this style.css file. So here I'm going to say app.use and here I'm going to create a virtual path. So here I'm going to specify single quote and specify forward slash and then specify static. So whenever I want to access this style.css I can access it with this static path. Just for that, I'm going to specify the path of the static asset. So I'm going to specify the path of this public folder. So as a second argument, I'm going to specify express dot static. And inside this parenthesis, I'm going to pass the path of this public folder. Now instead of specifying the hard-coded value here, I'm going to use path module. So I'm going to just add here constant variable with name path. And I'm going to just import this path module. So I'm going to say here require path. Keep in mind you don't have to install this path module. Path module is pre-installed in node. So you just need to require it. Once I require this path module, let me just use it here. So here I'm going to say path dot join. I'm going to call a method of path module and here I'm going to specify double underscore dir name. So this will just return the project directory name to this join method. And I'm going to just specify here second argument which is the public folder. So I'm going to specify here single quote and say public. That's it. So this statement will return the path of this public folder to this use method. So we can easily load the static asset inside this project. I'm going to save the changes. And now let me just link this style.css in my header section of this HTML page. So I'm going to open the header.ejs and just after this link tag, just after this bootstrap, right here I'm going to say link and inside this href, I'm going to link this style.css. Now here, I'm going to just specify the path of this style.css. As you can notice, I just specify here virtual path to this style.css. So to add this style.css, here you just need to say forward slash static style.css. That's it. This statement will add this file in the header section of your HTML page. Let me just save the changes back to the style.css and let me just check this style is working or not. I'm going to say here body and to this body I'm going to specify background color black. Save the changes, reload the browser. As you can notice, the style is now successfully applied to this project. So let me just add some styling to this login system. So I'm going to back to my style.css, get rid of this body section. And here I'm going to first create a class center D, which I already included inside this base.ejs right here. I have this class to this division tag. 
I'm going to just implement this class. So I'm going to open the style.css and to this center div, I'm going to specify padding top 10%. So this will add top padding to this HTML form. As you can notice, this will add some padding to the top section of this form. Just for that, down here, I'm going to add some padding to the button as well. So I'm going to say here btn, btn success. And then I'm going to add padding 0.4 em and 2 em. Save the changes, reload the browser. This will add padding to this button. Now, once I've done that, I'm going to change this font family of this login system. So I'm going to open a new tab and open the Google font. And from this website, I'm going to add my favorite font inside this project. So I'm going to select this open SAS and select this regular 400 style. So I'm going to select this style, open the embed and import this font inside my project. So I'm going to copy this import statement with this URL and paste it inside this style.css file up here like this. Just out of that, down here, I'm going to add body. And inside this body, I'm going to specify font family. So as you can notice, I have this font family here. I'm going to copy it and paste it right here like this. Save the changes. When I reload the browser, this will just change the font family of this login form. Now, just for that, I want to add some padding to these input elements. And down here, I'm going to add form. I'm going to select form and add padding to it. Padding is going to be 0 for the top and bottom and 3 em for the left and right. Save the changes, reload the browser. This will add some padding to the left and right side of these input elements. Just for that, I want to just change the size of this span tag. I'm going to back to my style.css. Here I'm going to say hash login. I'm going to select the login ID, this one, then select this title, and then I'm going to select this span tag. So here I'm going to specify dot title, and inside it I have a span tag. I'm going to select the span tag and specify font size 0.8 em save the changes reload the browser this will just change the size of this span tag now just out of that what i want i want to add background image to this form and inside this public folder i'm going to create a new folder and name this folder assets and inside it i'm going to add my background image so i'm going to just copy this background image and paste it inside this asset folder of my login system project right here like this now, when I open my project, I can see I have this file inside this asset folder. Don't worry, you can download the source code of this project from the link provided in the description. Now, just for that, let me inform this HTTP server that I'm going to use this background.png file inside this project. So, let me just add here another statement. Down here, I'm going to add app.use. And in the single quote, I'm going to specify the virtual path. So, I'm going to say here assets. And as a second argument, I'm going to specify express.static and inside it, I'm going to specify path.join and I'm going to just specify the path of this asset folder. So here I'm going to specify double underscore directory name. So this will return the project directory name and then I'm going to specify in the single quote public forward slash assets. So I'm going to specify the path of this asset as a second argument. Now, once I load this asset inside this project, let me just use it. So I'm going to open my style.css. To this body, I'm going to specify background image in the URL in the single code. I'm going to specify forward slash assets forward slash background underscore PNG dot PNG. So I'm going to specify the exact name of this image right here. And as you can notice, I'm using here virtual path assets. Just out of that, here I'm going to specify background size, cover, and background repeat no repeat when i reload the project as you can notice the background image is now loaded successfully i'm going back to my editor open the base.ejs file and let me just add some padding to this form i'm going to add a class to it and add padding top 3 this will add some top padding to this input elements now as you can notice we just successfully created a simple login system next we're going to add a login functionality to this form